European gas prices are in turmoil, soaring to new heights, as a showdown brews at Australia's LNG facilities. Fears for work strikes are also looming and are causing distress in the industry. As the clock ticks, negotiations hang in the balance, and the world watches with anticipation. Join us in this video as we unravel the Australian gas meltdown and witness Europe's disaster as it unfolds. But hey, before we delve any further into this development, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe to Tech Revolution. Let us now get this video started. Energy experts are painting a picture of global gas markets on edge due to the looming threats of strikes at Australian natural gas facilities. Traders are sweating over the possibility that an extended production stoppage could constrict worldwide supplies and drive European prices skyward. Over in Western Australia, the stage is set for daily showdowns as US energy heavyweight Chevron locks horns with worker unions from the Gorgon and Wheatstone projects. What's at stake? Well, is about pay and job security. Acting as the referee, Australia's Independent Workplace Relations Tribunal, the Fair Work Commission is orchestrating these face-offs. Things went up a notch recently when a union coalition declared they'd be on strike for a solid two weeks, commencing on September 14. The offshore alliance hit back at Chevron's assertion that negotiations were intractable, declaring on Facebook that they've upping the ante with protected industrial action to prove their point. As Chevron's Gorgon and Wheatstone LNG exports slowly dry up, they recon their demands will start looking mighty reasonable. Chevron Australia responded by stating that they are working to resolve differences with Gorgon and Wheatstone downstream employees and their representatives through further bargaining mediated by Fair Work Commission. People are hoping that this will work out. Australia's potential strike worries are giving Europe's gas prices a roller coaster ride. It is one of the world's top liquefied natural gas exporters, and these fears are making European gas prices jump around. Experts say this could keep happening for a while. Jacob Mandel, a senior researcher at Aurora Energy Research in the UK, says the global natural gas market is on edge. There's not much room for flexibility. So if Australia strikes happen, European gas prices might go up. He mentioned that even small news bits about what's happening with those Australian facilities are shaking up the gas prices. It's like a game of Jenga, we move one piece and the whole tower wobbles. If those strikes down under follow through, European gas prices could easily pass 40 euros per megawatt hour. Right now, they're at 33.5 euros, but last month, they briefly spiked to around 43 euros. Still, they're far from last summer's wild ride when prices shot past 300 euros. Jacob Mandel thinks it's super unlikely that prices will skyrocket like they did last September. Those were crazy times, but Europe has taken steps to prevent such madness again. But he's quick to mention that prices could still climb above 40 per megawatt hour if unexpected things like winter storms happen. It's like walking on a tightrope. Koshal Ramesh, the head of gas and LNG analytics at Rystad Energy, says there's trouble brewing at Chevron's Gorgon and Wheatstone places. So brace for more price roller coasters until they sort things out. However, Ramesh doesn't think it'll mess up production too much. He says Chevron might want to keep the strikes going because giving in the workers' demand might hurt less than losing a ton of cash due to production problems. So it's kind of like a political scenario and things get a bit crazy. But for now, Asian buyers aren't losing sleep over it. Plus, Japan and Korea will have more nuclear power this winter. So there's that to balance things out. This turbulence stems from the Eurozone's determined effort to reduce its dependence on Russian fossil fuel exports. This push comes in response to the Russia and Ukraine conflict, which prompted the European Union to rethink its energy strategy. In a positive development, 
The EU managed to reach its target of filling gas storage facilities to 90% capacity well ahead of schedule. This accomplishment raised hopes that the bloc has stockpiled enough fuel supplies to ensure that households remain warm during the upcoming winter. However, even with this progress, the gas market in the region remains sensitive and prone to fluctuations. Henning Gluistein, who serves as a director for energy, climate, and natural resources at the political consultancy Eurasia Group, points out the nervousness in Europe's gas markets. He highlights an interesting episode from August when gas prices surged due to the looming threat of a strike by LNG workers in distant Australia. This incident underscores just how interconnected and responsive global energy markets are to potential disruptions. Gloystein also cautions that this winter could bring real disruptions. This could range from Norwegian storms causing outages to a reduction in the supply of Russian gas to Europe. He identifies two significant risks that Europe faces, the possibility of a halt in pipeline transit through Ukraine and a suspension of Russian LNG shipments. These risks are tangible and have the potential to impact energy supplies in the region significantly. Adding to the complexity and uncertainty is the future of Russian gas transit through Ukrainian territory. The current agreement is set to expire at the end of next year, introducing a substantial element of uncertainty. The big question mark contributes to the cost calculations in Europe's energy markets as market participants grapple with the implications of potential changes in transit arrangements. Back in mid-August, Alexis Chernyshov, the CEO of Nafto Gas, Ukraine's largest oil and gas company, sat down with CNBC to shed light on the intricate nature of the Russian gas transit agreement. From his perspective, it's a multifaceted issue that requires careful consideration. He wanted to make it crystal clear that Ukraine is playing a crucial role in facilitating this transit. Primarily for the benefit of the European Union countries that still heavily rely on Russian gas. For these European nations, especially those gearing up for the winter season, a sudden halt in Russian gas supply could be disruptive. Chernyshov's statement underscores Ukraine's commitment to maintaining the stability of gas transit to the EU. It's not just about business, it's about ensuring that EU nations have the gas they need when they need it especially during chilly winter months. On the other side of the table, the European Commission, the EU's executive arm, weighed in on the situation. They pointed out that the gas transit agreement is far from being resolved and predicting its status 18 months from now is a challenging task. They made it clear that speculating on whether both parties will renew the contract isn't within their purview. In the broader context, the European Commission shared insight into the EU's Repower EU plan. Under this plan, the EU is actively working to reduce and eventually eliminate its dependence on Russian fossil fuel imports as swiftly as possible. This strategic shift is a response to the evolving geopolitical landscape and the need for energy security. The spokesperson further highlighted a significant shift in energy dynamics, Russian gas, which once accounted for around 50% of the EU's pipeline imports, has now dwindled to less than 10%. This decline is a direct consequence of the energy crisis. Triggered by the Russia and Ukraine conflict, it illustrates the EU's determination to diversify its energy sources and reduce its reliance on Russia, a move aimed at bolstering its energy independence and security. In essence, the Russian gas transit agreement remains a complex and evolving matter with wide-ranging implications for both Ukraine and the EU. It's a balancing act between ensuring uninterrupted energy supplies and aligning with broader strategic goals of reducing reliance on Russian fossil fuels. The dynamics at play in this energy landscape will continue to shape the future of gas transit in the region and its far-reaching impact on Europe's energy markets. Before we go, we'd love to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this energy crisis? 